The Dallas Cowboys season ended in the divisional round of the playoffs with a 19-12 loss to the San Francisco 49ers. It was Dallas' second consecutive 12-5 season and they accomplished a lot of things in 2022. But Cowboys fans are understandably fed up. They are sick of losing in the playoffs, and early in the playoffs for that matter too. The last time this team made the NFC Championship game was back in 1995 en route to their fifth Super Bowl title, and it's not going to get better for them anytime soon. Sure, they can win a playoff game here or there, and this season proved that, but unless there are serious changes with this roster and personnel, we will be doing a video similar to this one year from now. And there's a lot to dive into in today's video as to why the Dallas Cowboys are in serious trouble. Now let's begin. And we are starting today's video by discussing a couple of good things with the Cowboys. They have one of the best, if not the best, defensive player in the entire NFL in Micah Parsons on their roster. Any NFL team would be grateful to have Micah, and understandably so. He has started his career with back-to-back -back first team All-Pros, back-to-back 13-plus sack seasons, and back-to-back -back years with at least three forced fumbles. He is a problem for opposing offenses. But with Micah, and the same applies to the 49ers with Nick Bosa for that matter, you always hear about how a team has a Super Bowl window with a quarterback on their rookie contract, and it's true. The Eagles paying Jalen Hurts $6 million over the first four years of his career helps them acquire players like A.J. Brown, for example. Dallas, on the other hand, signed Dak Prescott to a four-year, $160 million extension. It's a part of the NFL, and how this relates to Micah Parsons is for as dominant as he is, they should be doing everything they can to acquire players to help them win a Super Bowl now. As in, trade for players that are on their rookie deals, that either have not panned out that you can get at a discount, or players that have showed some promise that may not be on a great team. And before you know it, Micah will be getting paid in the neighborhood of $25 to $30 million per year. That also applies to a receiver on their team who had a 10-catch, 117-yard performance in the divisional round of the playoffs, that of course being CeeDee Lamb. In terms of young talent on their rookie deals, you're not going to find many duos that are better than CD and Micah across the NFL. Of course there are, and Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase come to mind, and there's a reason the Bengals have been as successful as they have over the past few years, and Christian Darisol and Justin Jefferson come to mind as well. The point is, your Super Bowl window is now. Your window is not 2024 and beyond. Be aggressive make the trade. Because what worries me about this team is they are stuck in mediocrity is not the word, because back-to-back 12-5 -back and five seasons is certainly not mediocre. And what's especially frustrating for Cowboys fans is they are stuck not in mediocrity, but they are stuck being good and not great. And that's what Cowboys fans are upset about, rightfully so, by the way. And if you want to say they're the same old Cowboys and crack jokes about them not getting to the NFC Championship game again, I mean they have back-to-back 12-win -back seasons and are more than likely better than your team. Of course there are exceptions, but this is a good team and not a great team. And taking the next step to become a great team is incredibly difficult for any team, not just the Cowboys, for several reasons. The increased pressure can be good or bad, and recently we saw the Bills, a lot of people's preseason Super Bowl pick, get beat by three scores in a home playoff game. But one big thing that worries me about Dallas is another team in their division, and that's the Philadelphia Eagles. And thinking out loud for a minute, if the Cowboys beat the 49ers in the divisional round, do you think they would have went into Philly with the NFC Championship game on the line and beat the Eagles at the link? Personally, I do not, and I don't think that's a hot take, especially with the way Dak Prescott was playing leading up to that game. He had an interception in every game since Thanksgiving, minus the Bucks' wild card round of the playoffs, and in what you could argue, what was the biggest game of Dak Prescott's career, a divisional round playoff matchup against the best defense in the NFL, a chance to reset the narrative and to show Dak can win big games, what did Dak do? He threw two interceptions and put up 12 points with the season on the line. And I don't think it's a hot take to say the Cowboys would have lost to Philly in the NFC Championship game. 
And for the DAC fans, yes, DAC played a hell of a game against the Bucks in the wildcard round, as they put up 31 points and Prescott threw for over 300 yards and 4 touchdowns. He was even good under pressure, as in that game he was 6 of 9, nice, for 53 yards and 2 touchdowns. He had a passer rating of 121.8 while under pressure, but boy was it a tale of two games. Because against San Francisco, Dak was 4 of 11 for 14 yards under pressure with an interception. 14 yards equates to 1.3 yards per attempt, and he had a passer rating of just 7. And when Dak pushed the ball down the field, as in more than 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmage in this game, he was just 3 of 11 for 78 yards with an interception. And I don't think Dak is ever going to lead this franchise to a Super Bowl. Which, to be fair, you can say about a lot of quarterbacks. But I think Dak is a good quarterback, and he certainly has games, and hell, he'll even have a stretch of games where he looks like an elite QB. And then he'll have a game like he had against the Washington Commanders back in Week 18, where the floodgates break, and Dak looks absolutely nothing like a good NFL quarterback. There was a two-play scenario in that game specifically that summed up the Cowboys' day, as they went on to lose 26-6 in the regular season finale. Dak threw a pass that should have been a pick six, then as if on cue, the very next play, he threw a pick six. He finished the game 14 of 37 for 128 yards with a touchdown and an interception. He had a passer rating of 45.8, and not surprisingly, it was worse when he was under pressure. In that game specifically, Dak was 1 of 7 for 6 yards while under pressure. And this isn't to say every loss in the Cowboys season is on Dak Prescott's shoulders, because it's not, but when you are the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, you are going to receive a ton of scrutiny, fair or not. That's the nature of the beast. But another reason why the Dallas Cowboys are in trouble is because of their financial situation. Dak is not the only Cowboy getting paid an enormous amount of money in 2023, and because of poor judgment and mismanagement in terms of what players should be getting paid, this really limits what Dallas can do because of this. Demarcus Lawrence has a cap hit of $26 million at 31 years old next year, and sure, D-Law had a resurgence year, and per PFF, he had 59 pressures in 2022, which was the most he's had in a year since 2018, when he had 66 pressures and 10.5 sacks. But is he worth $26 million next year and ultimately 11.3% of the salary cap? I think the answer is a pretty clear no, and he is uncuttable due to previous guarantees. If the Cowboys cut to Marcus Lawrence, they will lose $9 million and have him account for $35 million against the cap. The $26 that he is getting paid and then $35 against the cap is where the losing $9 million part comes in. So unless they would do a trade to a team that has a lot of cap space available, like the Bears, and trade to Marcus and a 5th round pick for a 7th round pick, you know, just to relieve the cap space, he is a Cowboy next year. And he's been in the league since 2014 and has a lot of wear and tear on his body. I am very happy for DeMarcus' success this past year, as he made his third career Pro Bowl, but to have $75 million in 2023 wrapped up in Dak Prescott and DeMarcus Lawrence, to me at least, is very, very concerning. These two, of course, are not the only veterans to have a big cap hit, and left tackle Tyron Smith is a player that is almost guaranteed to get cut, as he has not played a full season, brace yourself here, in the past 7 years. He has not played 17 games in a season since the 16 to 17 game per season change, and has played in just 17 games total since the start of the 2020 season. Dallas will save $9 million by cutting Tyron, and for as good as the 8-time Pro Bowler and 4-time All-Pro player was in his prime, he will turn 33 next year and has a serious history with injuries. I would be shocked if he is not cut in a few months. And another player that will be cut as well that goes back to the bad contracts mentioned earlier in the video is running back Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke is clearly not the same player he was a few years ago and will have a dead cap hit of $11.8 million in 2023. 
His cap hit will be $16.7 million, meaning the Cowboys would save nearly $5 million by cutting him. And the decision is, or should be at least, clear. Zeke had zero 100-yard rushing games in 2022, had a career low in yards per carry as he averaged a paltry 3.8 per attempt, and had six games, which includes each of the two playoff games, where he averaged less than three yards per carry. And this kind of goes back to the DAC part for a minute, and how being the quarterback of America's team naturally puts you in a position to catch a lot of shit, but in the two playoff games, Elliott had a combined 23 carries for 53 yards. And it's not like Zeke is an insane receiving threat either, as he had three catches for 16 yards in the postseason on six targets. During the regular season, he had 17 catches for 92 yards all year. And the worst thing about the Zeke contract is it was signed in September of 2019 and did not kick in until the 2021 season started. And in Zeke's two years since the contract kicked in, which of course would be 21 and 22, for as frustrating as times were with Zeke, they could have been a lot worse. And I think the Cowboys got off extremely lucky with how it played out. Signing a running back to a contract extension that does not kick in for two years is incredibly irresponsible, as we've seen running backs that just a few short years ago start to fall off. Dalvin Cook and Alvin Kamara are a perfect example, along with Leonard Fournette and Zeke himself. Unfortunately for Dallas, the contracts do not stop here either. A quiet contract nobody talks about is receiver Michael Gallup. He is in a situation similar to Demarcus Lawrence, where the team has to eat a lot of money if they cut him, as he has a cap hit of $13.8 million, while having a dead cap of $19 million. So it would be a profit of negative $5 million to cut him. Translation, Michael Gallup is a cowboy in 2023. That is, of course, barring a trade like we mentioned with the Bears earlier, where Dallas would give up more draft capital just to relieve the salary cap. And this next part is to note a high salaried contract rather than a player with a bad contract, but Zach Martin, who has been a first team all pro player three times in the last four years, will be paid $19 million in 2023. Again, that's a part of paying good players, but it is something to note that the Cowboys have $94 million in 2023 in three players, with 49 going to Dak, 26 going to Demarcus Lawrence, and 19 going to Zach Martin. And this all goes back to the Cowboys being in serious trouble because they have some holes to fill. The Tony Pollard situation became a lot more interesting as he suffered a high ankle sprain and fractured fibula during the playoff game against the 49ers. He is also a free agent and Dallas just got burned on paying a running back. So will they pay Tony Pollard or try to replace the position altogether? Dalton Schultz is a free agent who just played under the franchise tag, and they may have this position to fill as well. And soon enough, CeeDee Lamb is going to get paid, and so is Micah Parsons. And unless you are making a Stefan Diggs for a first round pick type trade, there's not a lot you can do other than hope you hit a home run in the upcoming draft picks. There's not going to be a lot of money for them in free agency, and that's what makes this so difficult. That's what makes winning a Super Bowl so difficult. And for Dallas, the division rival Eagles also look like an absolute juggernaut, and a head coach that does not win big games in Mike McCarthy. All of this is why the Dallas Cowboys are in serious trouble moving forward. Because what are they going to do to make a push for a Super Bowl? And that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as it would mean the world and help a ton. And until next time, as always, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.